what's been your mental health journey like in the music industry? Cause you've been doing this Heavy. a little while yeah. and you've, you know, obviously, you know, worked with Savage back in the day and then mm -hmm. clearly, you know, since the eighties and mm -hmm. other things in between, mm -hmm. right. You have a, you know, very long story, but what's been your, you know, journey when it comes to like the mental side of this business? Well, for one, I didn't know that I needed to address mental health until a certain point. Like I had to hit almost complete rock bottom. Whoa. Mm -hmm. What did that um, look like for you? For me, that looked like, you know, people that were really close to me that loved me saying, you know, I was unrecognizable in terms of like how I was showing up. I had a, cl a really close friend of mine, you know, after losing a friend, a mutual friend of ours, come to me and be like, I don't think you know who you are. And I was like, what? What do you mean by that? Like, what do you even mean by that? Right. And not even, you know, just com completely at a loss. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I know who I am. I'm key. I'm this Grammy winning manager and, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that and yada, 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 yada. All these outside things, right. That like completed who I thought I was. Right. It's like been five years of thinking and reflecting and therapy. Um, that was like coming back to myself, which is what third and Hayden also is. Right. It's like coming full circle back to who, I started as, because as kids, we're like very pure, we're very innocent, very untainted, right? Minus like the traumas and things that like get added on, you know, in years after being a young child. So in the last five years, I've just been doing a lot of that, a lot of soul searching and a lot of therapy. I think I've probably spent like maybe five figures in therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, I go every other week. Worth every um, dime though, huh? Oh yeah. She's very expensive, but very worth it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you um, think it is about the music business that... Cause I think we're just now at a point where we're starting to hear more conversations about mental health sure. in music. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's historically it wasn't a thing. No. What about the music industry for creatives and then even executives? Mm -hmm. Do we think, you know what I mean? Like makes mental health such a, a thing right a now? prominent thing. I think it's a mix of things, right? I think it's the younger generations kind of showing us how important it is. Like there's a lot of younger people who prioritize mental health and, and the self work, the shadow work, taking days off. Like when I was coming up, taking a day off sounded insane. <laughs> like, are you crazy? Summer Fridays, what? Someone asked me about summer Fridays in our team call. I was like, what is that? <laughs> 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 what? Um, but we, our gener my generation in particular, I'm obviously a little older than y'all. Like we worked to the bone, like, because we had to, because we thought we had to, because we, we saw the people before us working their asses off. You know what I mean? So we thought we had to do that. And so you just, you're not conscious of how much you're ignoring yourself and how much you're ignoring, you know, your, your mental health and taking care of yourself and getting to know yourself, getting to see what you don't like, who you do like. A lot of our events are around open bars. There's a lot of drinking. You do a lot of dumb things when you're wasted out of your mind four days a week, five days a week, because you're at these networking events. So I think just in the last few years, it's become so like at the forefront because a lot of us hit rock bottom, right? During the pandemic, in the middle of the pandemic, before the pandemic, where we're just like, we're washed, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. Su suicidal ideation became a bigger thing that, you know, our community is talking about. And we've seen Chris Lighty's and really big people like want to get out of here. And I think it's, it's a lot of it is the younger people being like, yo, that's not healthy. That's not cool to not know who you are. You know, it's not cool to not take a day off. Like we don't have to be working 24 seven. We're actually not curing cancer. Though I do think music is very healing. You can take a day off and you should take a day off. Right. Why do so many artists do you think struggle with mental health? Yeah. I mean, their entire job is almost being performative and being performative is like, it's very detrimental to your spirit and your soul. If you let it be right. I'm always having to show up for other people. Always, you know, you can't repeat outfits and you got to be fresh. And are you attractive? Are you too heavy? Like it's a lot of self, -con like it makes you very self-conscious, I think, to be an artist and to be always on display. Like imagine someone just always watching you like the Truman Show. Mm. You know, like that can be very deteriorating to who you are as a human being. But I think there's a lot of artists who do a great job and not letting him, not letting it take them under. Or even if they did let him take it under, take them under, they talked about it. You know, Kendrick talked about, you know, his therapy journey, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, I, I resonate and connect with, with his journey. 
Drake has not told me anything about his. <laughs> Back to her family. hating Drake. Okay. I don't hate Full Drake. Circle. <laughs> this Drizzy. entire episode is about my hate. Drake. <laughs> she doesn't fuck with you, bro. Yeah. That's not true. Cue the BBL. Drizzy, I just want to yeah. hear what he's. I want to hear what he's talking about in therapy. Yeah, That's it. he's definitely doing because it. we're the, we're the same age. You got to be going through something. Yeah. The money's yeah. not fixing everything. <laughs> no, it's it so can't. true. I'd love to see like labels have in-house therapists. Well, our deals come with mental health funds. Love um, that. As a label. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's something that it didn't, it actually happened after Jordan. So Jordan's deal might be the only one that doesn't have that. So he got screwed. Um, he got <laughs> fucked. <yeah. laughs> he Sorry, talk about fucking artists out of their deals. I mean, <laughs> where are my mental health benefits? <laughs> Keys. Jesus. It's a brand new thing. Jordan, it's we okay. got you. You can sign to the One More Time podcast records. <laughs> we give you full mental health benefits. You can be our first artist. We'd love to poach you from third and hating. They go to white man. Oh, God. <laughs> And now it turned racial. And yeah. now it's racist. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we are in Georgia. Okay. It's true. Well, Atlanta. <laughs> Make that though. a clip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, we're in Stone Mountain. Where are we at? That is. This is Stone Mountain. This is the heart of racism. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally racist people on statues like two minutes away from yeah. here. We got you Confederate can hike with generals them. carved into granite. <laughs> yeah. Right here. You can hike with the racists. <laughs>